Hello everyone, this is Jonathan Little. I'm here with the 18th episode of WeeklyPokerHand.com, where today I'm going to be going over a heads-up hand from the final table of the LA Poker Classic, which took place in February of 2012. Uh, it takes place between Doc Sands, who is a very, very good tournament player, and this uh, jazz player, who I don't really know a thing about. Although, to get heads up at a, in a tournament like this, you just have to be pretty good. So, I don't think he's going to be just like totally giving it away or anything like that. We're playing 6,000, 12,000. Doc Sands opens to 28,000, which I think is perfectly fine. Um, notice the sack sizes. Doc Sands has 9 million. Jazz has 7 million. So they are effectively 60-ish big blinds deep. I, I think raising to about 2.3 3x or so is going to be good whenever you're that deep. If As you get a little bit shallower, I think a min-raise becomes a little bit better, just because you want to save chips whenever you do get 3-bet and you have air. So, uh, Doc Sands make it 20, makes it 28. Jazz makes it 80,000. I'm sorry, 800,000. I said 20. It makes it 280,000 to 800,000. And Doc Sands elects to 4-bet. And something you should know about Doc Sands is that he 4-bets a lot. So, if you're 4-betting a lot, you can easily 4-bet a hand like Queens for value, because your opponent's going to be sitting there with, like, Ace-Jack and just rip it down on you happily. Um, so I think this is actually a pretty easy play. The The viewer that sent the hand in was talking about how he thought that whenever Jazz here goes all in, this might be closer to a fold, because um, Jazz has to have a good hand, and if, if you think... if if Sands thinks Jazz has Ace King a big or a big pair, he's probably flipping against that range. So right here, uh, Doc. The thing you need to realize though is Doc Sands only needs to win 36% of the time. So let's give him Queens. Let's see how tight Jazz has to be shoving in order to make this a fold. So you see right here, if his range is Ace King or Queens, Queens is still a pretty easy call. So the only way this is going to become a fold, pretty much is if his range does not include ace-king offsuit. And of course, Jazz's range is going to include ace-king offsuit. I would actually say his range is probably more something like this. And he's going to have some bluffs in there. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he has some bluffs. Let's assume his range is this. You'll see against this range, we have 52% equity. We're crushing him. So, Queens is going to be an easy call. We already know that. So what should we be calling with in this spot if we decided to play our hand this way? And this is what good players do. They think about, what would I do in every situation? And if you're only thinking about, what would I do with queens? You figure it out, and then you move on. You're going to miss opportunities to grow and expand as a poker player. So right here, would you call with jacks? And I, I certainly would if I'm Doc Sands. And as you see, he has 44% equity against this range, and which I do think is going to be like a reasonable range. So would you call with tens? I would say yes. I'd actually probably call with nines. I think that would be about the bottom of my calling range. And as you see, nines would be a little bit, a little bit loose, but that's assuming um, Jazz is never bluffing. Tens, as we see, is going to be close as well. And the reason nines and tens are both close is because notice the bottom of Jazz's shoving range includes pocket tens, so that means tens, nines, eights, sevens are all going to have about the same amount of equity. Um, I would also call with ace queen, I believe here, and I'd probably fold ace jack. So it looks like I'm. if I was sitting in this spot, I may call a little bit too loose. But, I mean, this is, again, assuming Jazz is never bluffing. If we start adding in some hands like this, then maybe a few of these, the Jazz is decides to spaz out with, you'll see that, like, Ace-Queen goes through the roof to where it's very easy to call. So I usually tend to call with a range that's slightly worse than what I should call with, assuming my opponent's never bluffing. But because your opponent is going to be bluffing sometimes, you can justify calls in those spots. Um, again, though, the, the viewer that sent this in said that why would Sands want to get all in here? Because if he's effectively flipping, why would you want to flip for all that money whenever you're a lot better than your opponent? Well, first off, you don't know you're flipping with queens, as I just showed with this range here. Um, if your opponent's shoving even the tight range... You'll see you're flipping against ace king and ace king, kings and aces you lose to, but then you're crushing these hands. And if you're, when you're crushing a lot of your opponent's range, it is not a flip. And also you're getting 1.7 to 1. And because of that, I think this is going to be a very, very easy 4-bet call off with pocket queens. 
and um, he does call, and I'm actually going to save what Jazz has. I'm not going to let you know that until part two, where I'm going to talk about what Jazz is doing in this spot, and if I think his play is good or not. And um, I do do an extensive discussion on Heads Up Poker in my book, Secrets of Professional Tournament Poker. Volume 1 is out currently. Volume 2 should be out in the very, very near future if it's not out already. So check that out. And uh, all those include a bunch of free training videos as well. So uh, Secrets of Professional Tur Tournament Poker. You can get it on Amazon. And if you guys have any questions or comments about this episode or any others, please feel free to post them. This has been Jonathan Little for WeeklyPokerHand.com. Thanks for watching.